welcome back. This is G-Man, My World 67. Uh, well, it's been a while uh, since our last video, and i just been re really busy. I uh, haven't had a lot of time to work on the layout, uh, and it's been cold, and uh, the weather's just really been crazy here, uh, cold and wet, and then wet, and then cold, and then <laughs> And then we had one warm day, and then it got cold again, and then now we've had three days of, of warm weather, so uh, with no rain, although rain is in the forecast. Uh, but um, I hadn't had really time to make a video. We've had been busy, a lot of different things going on. Um, my birthday was Sunday. Um and uh, our church group gave me uh, a birthday dinner at, at our church. And uh, my mother-in-law's birthday is the same day. And we had her birthday at um, her church. Um, they did it in their uh, fellowship hall for her on Saturday. And so it's just been really uh, a busy time, a lot of funerals, and we all have those things going on in our lives. But they take precedence over um, our hobbies and different things that we would normally do. And so having said all of that, we're back. This is a 561 American Flyer. I uh, got this in uh, this year. This is a this year's purchase. Uh, it's one of like five or six purchases I've made. I was going to do unboxings on them, but I got them, got them in. only had them a few minutes most times to even look at them and see what it is. And uh, and so I, I just opened it and started working on it. Now what I've done with this, uh, the paint was a little faded in areas. Um, there was a couple of places it was missing, and I wish I really wish I could have shown it to you before I started work on it. Um, it really wasn't that bad. The body has no dents, it, no breaks, no scratches, uh, just paint wear uh, and paint loss. And so I took uh, our old trusty friend, the uh, uh, permanent marker, and I went around it and touched it up and. Um, Shot it with clear. Uh, clean these up, the rails, the handrails, uh, real good. And I cleaned these as best as I could. Now I may take these off later and clean them some more. But they're not really that bad. And when you consider this engine's 80 plus years old, um, they're looking pretty good. Now, what, what I've done on the front of this, it was missing a boiler plate. And so I didn't have a boiler front for it per se without scrapping out another flyer project that I've, that I've got that uh, one of my old flyer engines uh, <laughs> that I've had that I have never gotten repaired uh, back together that's fallen apart over the years just from moving and uh, I was going to take the boiler front off of one of them and and put on here and then I remembered I had um, these plastic uh, like washers and uh, this, this this is a like a plastic washer and uh, it does have a little fin on it right here across the front and it has a screw hole well I enlarged the screw hole so that the uh, light would shine better through it now on the on the regular boiler the light is actually up here and so this is just a temporarily boiler I've made for it and you can do the same thing uh, like I say this is just a, a plastic washer and it comes with a screw in it and you usually use these to hold like 
your outside uh, paper when you're going in a house and uh, or or your roof. Uh, you put these on and they hold your paper uh, to the wall. Uh, your insulation paper or your insulation for that matter. And uh, it had many other usage usages, but uh, I thought I'd try that. And, and, and as you can see, it fits it. And they'll fit several other different types, makes and of locos. And what I've done here is, um, if you remember oh, <clears throat> a year or two ago, uh, actually this was something that, that Ben had found. And they actually, uh, you take them and you stick them on the bottom of uh, like your printers or, or your laptops or your radios or, or whatever you have that you want to move around and you don't want to scar up the top of your desk and these are bumpers actually is what they're called and they are self-adhesive and they're clear and opaque and um, I was trying to see if I had it handy uh, I think I've shown it before in a past video um, but they come with several uh, in, a, in a package in three, I think about three different sizes. And so they work great for lens on engines, especially um, when you're doing Marx engines. They work great for a lens, uh, Marx lens. Now I just glued this on. Uh, I just tacked it on. Because I say is this is just temporary. I've got a boiler front coming for it. Um, and it should be here today or tomorrow. Hopefully. <clears throat> and I'm going to take this outside uh, to the layout. We're going to go out to the layout room here in a second. And we're going to watch it run. Let you view the layout and we'll talk about that a little bit. Just wanted to show you a little bit more of this engine. This engine, when I got it, was really dirty. Um, it didn't want to run. Uh, it still does not have reverse. Uh, reverse will kick in it once in a while. And uh, not. Primarily, it always stays in forward, uh, no matter where I sit. Where, no matter where I set it. Whether it's there or in the middle or right there. Um, and I don't know whether something's actually wrong with the lever. Or um, it's just the uh, E-unit itself maybe just needs really good cleaning. Now I did not tear it apart and tear the E-unit the e -unit out. Because it's the way it sits on these, these motors, you, you have to really take the motor apart to get to it. And so... I didn't want to go into that much detail because it is working. It's working forward. Uh, so I did spray some WD down in it a couple times. And it began to run better. I, I cleaned the brushes up on it. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Cleaned the armature. And uh, lubed it. Tuned it. And it's up and going. And it really runs good. It's quiet and it's smooth. I was really amazed with it. Okay, now there's one other thing I want to share with you. Okay, this is, uh, got this in yesterday, and just took the packing slip off of it. I'm trying to hold the camera with one hand, and let me see if I can. Maybe we can set it over here. I don't have my stand anymore for 
my phone camera, so <clears throat> and I want to start using the camera that I had purchased last year uh, for this purpose. I want to start using it again. I quit using it because it was a little bit difficult to transfer. Even with the com the uh, computer program that it has, I had to add another program to it to make that transference. Eventually, I'm going to get a Go phone and hopefully get away from that. The camera that I'm using is pre Go phone. Same type of thing. Uh, it's a Kodak. But it requires more actions to uh, make it work for the usage with uh, recording for the channel. All right, as you can probably hear or tell, I'm still having problems with my breathing and my sinuses, my nose. I hope you're getting this okay because I can't see actually what I'm recording right now. What we have here is a uh, 5.64 tender. Um, it's not the exact correct tender for this engine, but the 5.64 tender does work. Here it is, the 5.64 tender. Now, I just got this in, as I said yesterday. And uh, these tenders actually are wired. And they control the smoke or in, in, uh, in a 5.64 if, if it's a smoking engine. They also have... Um, this switch here, which contains reverse, and that's your reversing mechanism. So, uh, as I say, it's a very similar tender to the one that goes with the 561. So we're going to be using this temporarily with the 561 until either I'll fix a Marks tender uh, to use with this engine or I'll find a tender for it. I've got a lot of Marks tenders. Um, or I'll find a tender for it that we can use. Now, I've got a four wheel Marks tender. Yeah, it would look great once it's repainted. As you can see, it's rusty. And it's about the same size, and it's made very similar. And then I have a 8-wheel a, uh, tender. I have several 8-wheel tenders that we can use. So we're going to have a tender for it. Uh, as I say, temporarily, I'm going to fix this one up. Uh, I do have a 564 coming also. Uh, and I have about four other purchases, uh, four or five other purchases that I've made um, at the end of last month. And they are also on their way, and I'll share them with you when they get here. Um, but I'm not really working on trains right now. Uh, hadn't really been working on anything, like I say, plan on working on the layout 
finish getting that cleaned up room so we can run trains. Um, did get one, in one other thing that I want to share with you. And that is another hornbee shell. Let me move this out of the way. And this one I got out of Canada. Um, it's a 2180. And as you can see, it's got a lot of imperfections. But overall, the paint is good, uh, except for the scratches and uh, a few little minor dings. And so we'll be... <coughs> uh, Electrifying this, or re-electrifying it. it, this is actually, it was not a wind-up engine, even though it has the holes in the sides. Um, Hornby did early on, they used the same bodies that they used for the wind-up engines. So that's why that works. The difference is, uh, the biggest difference in them was that the boiler front had a housing for a light. Uh, as you can see, in the, the electric uh, powered engines. And uh, primarily, everything else about them was the same. Now, these are uh, four, four twos. These are four, four twos. And so, we'll be... Uh, We'll be powering this up in the near future, as we will the other Hornby engines that I have for project. I think maybe this might be one of the last. I might buy a couple of more if I run across them, and they're different than what I already have. But I think this is going to be one of the last uh, Hornby uh, engines that I will actually repower and rebuild. And so I just thought I'd share that with you. Uh, we have several of them to do, and we'll be doing them uh, this year. Hadn't forgot about the Mark St William Crooks. I know I said that on last, I think, uh, the last video, and we do plan to get to it. Uh, don't get discouraged, guys. It's just that, like I say, we've been really busy. And... Uh, I'd rather be playing trains uh, in some cases, but in most cases, the uh, things that are going on are very rewarding um, to the soul, to the spirit, man. And so, anyway, let's go to the layout. Okay. Okay, we're out here at the layout. Now I have, is that 561? I have uh, <clears throat> get it on the track. Now remember, I just took this tender out of the box so and I don't have the front truck on this I need to, <clears throat> to put the front and the rear truck on it so consequently looks like it's the first time I've brought it out here to test run it Consequently, it looks like um, this front end is dropping onto the track. It doesn't have 
a front truck on it. But we'll try it and see what <clears throat> what's going on. Uh, this is the first time this 561 has uh, been out here to run on this track. And that cow catcher, as you can see, is touching the track periodically. But as you can see, it's a very smooth running engine. And they're very heavy. And I don't know whether you noticed it or not, but the light lines up, lights up <clears throat> real nicely. I'm going to uh, shorted somewhere. I guess. <clears throat> Put that piece of carpet under there. See what happens. But as you can see, it does light up and it throws out a nice light. We're going to have to get that front truck under there. And get the rear truck on it before we run it again so that you can really see uh, how well uh, that engine will perform. Well, <clears throat> back to the layout. Uh, this is as far as I've gotten with it so far. Here's our Gene Autry Hotel, our motel. I'm going to go back in and put some plastic inserts, some plastic windows in it. Um, I'm going to put some windows in our supermarket. A lot of detail, a little detail work. Uh, I made that barbershop several years ago. Uh, and I might, I might scrap that barbershop and put in a K-Lineville barbershop and still use um, the people and the little homemade accessories that I have in there. The station's working out great. And by the way, talking about the station, I have two of those. One is a operating station and that one is not. Um, but the operating station needs some work. It needs a turntable and some other things. But I did get this in uh, Friday. And uh, I'm going to use this in conjunction 
with that one. I don't know whether you can see that or not. And it's a little taller. And the roof's a little narrower. But that gives us uh, double platforms for offloading the trains. It also came with these metal, white metal figures. Really good buy. Uh, I think I paid $18 for it. <clears throat> and of course we have a lot of work to do here um, each one of these accessories needs some serious work on them now last I know they all did function uh, but they're missing parts as you can see this one's missing a building uh, and it's just missing some other parts to actually make it work to where as it, it does what it's supposed to. Uh, they're minor parts, but they're hard to get hold of. This one it actually is just missing, I believe, the roof. I have not gone through it, um, but I just wanted to set them out and get them placed so that I know where I was going to put them or have an idea. And uh, once I get some of this other stuff done, I'm going to go back and begin to uh, repair them. At least, as I said in uh, <clears throat> one of the other videos, uh, even if I don't get them totally functional right now, we're going to fix them up to where as they look good again. And as you can see, everything else is still tore up. It's uh, in a mess. Uh, we did, I did get the tracks cleared off so that we could run the trains around uh, to test the trains. And that's as far as I've got. This is the first time I've been out here, actually, except for to bring something out here or to, to get something uh, in over probably a week, a week and a half. So, yeah, there's not a whole lot being done. But uh, here's our baseball field. I don't remember whether I showed that to you or not. The, the guys got tired and laid down on the job. Uh, so the game is uh, apparently over for now. And what you see here is a light. And it's dead. But that is a light. And uh, we're going to use it in under there uh, to shine down on the baseball field. We got our casual car sales. Um, building and it's kind of close to the tracks but it might be the only place that I have to put it but we just set it there for now to see how it looked placement wise and then all these other buildings to to put up and then we have one other addition uh, I, I, I had a uh, plastic wheel service station um, one of the uh, regular ones, the smaller ones, and uh, it got busted up here a few years ago, and I just never replaced it. I always substitute this ceramic building uh, <laughs> as the, the plastic wheel station. Well, that's kind of what I have for you for now. Uh, as I said, I hadn't been doing much of anything. Um, I did clean up this 561 and uh, get it ready for operation. I'll probably go through that tender's pretty clean. I'll probably go through, clean that tender up, touch it up, uh, and uh, make it ready for service. And other than that, um, <clears throat> I'm going to try to do another video this week 
Uh, I've got a busy week again this week, but I'm going to try to do another busy video this week uh, to get it out there on the layout, and I'm going to specifically uh, direct my attention to the layout because I want to get it cleaned up out here and uh, <clears throat> get this layout out up and going uh, to where it's actually functional. We can run trains around it now, as I said, but um, I, I really want it to be pretty much uh, set up. So that all I have to do is just go through and work a building at a time or whatever I'm going to do and uh, add scenery, whatever, and do it while the railroad itself is functional and not have to do any more work on um, the railroad itself. So, all right. That's all I have for you for, the, for now. Uh, as always, happy rails. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your patience. Um, don't give up on me because I haven't given up on you. That's all. Happy rails until uh, we meet again.